dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, the time is 5 o'clock on October 9th. I'm Madison Pergram and thank you for joining us on Mountain News This Morning. Well, yesterday we got a, an ounce of fall weather. It was cool outside throughout the whole day, but let's go to meteorologist Kelly McShane. Kelly, yesterday was nice. It was stayed cool throughout the day. Didn't get really hotter in the evening. I know it was nice and refreshing. Uh, those clouds did stick around for a lot of us, but overall it was just a nice fall day here in the mountains yesterday, and we can expect that once again today. Right now we're still seeing those pesky clouds hanging out throughout the region, but we are dry and we will continue to stay dry. As far as temperatures go, we are in the 50s this morning, 56 in Jackson and Hazard, 57 in London, Prestonsburg waking up at 55 degrees. Good morning to you folks. And as far as visibility goes, we're just looking at patchy fog throughout the region. So maybe give yourself about five extra minutes this morning, but that fog could definitely be thick at times. I will let you know what you can expect for the rest of the week here in just a little bit, Madison. Thank you, Kelly. Well, police say nine people were arrested in connection to a home burglary in Laurel County. The nine were directly or indirectly arrested during an investigation into a home break in just outside of London on October 3rd. In the theft, police recovered video surveillance, which connects them to most of the stolen items, which totaled more than $20,000. Video surveillance is great, especially if the cameras are of good quality. Um, they greatly uh, increase the likelihood of us arresting people and recovering stolen property or solving the crime. Deputies do expect to find more of the stolen items as well as make more arrests. And a former University of Kentucky student will sit, spend six months in prison for making threats towards campus on social media. A federal judge sentenced Haley Duvall yesterday. She also received six months of house arrest and Duvall pleaded guilty to making false threats. Just hours before her arrest, Duvall actually talked with our sister station WKYT about the Snapchat threats last November. She will report to prison in December and will be fined $1,800. The judge also also ordered her to serve two and a half years probation after her sentence. And one Harlan County man pleaded guilty Monday to possession with the intent to distribute more than 500 grams of meth and possession of a firearm in furtherance of a drug trafficking crime. 23-year-old Dylan Brewer was stopped in Bell County with two kilograms of meth and a loaded firearm hidden in a speaker of his car. Brewer was getting meth from Georgia and traveling to Harlan County to sell it. Brewer's sentencing hearing has not been set. He faces a minimum of 15 years in prison with a maximum of life and a maximum fine of $20 million. And people at a home in Ashland say they had a bizarre late night encounter with a trespasser that left him behind bars of a dog cage. Late Friday night, Debbie Cottle says she was on a swing with her son in the backyard when their dog started barking. She says they spotted a man on their property who they believe got into their backyard through a gate in the alley behind their home. They say when he confronted the man, the reaction was one of the last things they expected. The guy crawls in the dog cage. I have no clue why he crawled in the cage. The man remained in the dog cage until police arrived and got him out. They say his behavior remained erratic and believe was under the strong influence of something. No charges were filed and the family believes it is the last time they'll ever see a trespasser willingly cage himself. And officials responded to and officials responded to a house fire and hazard yesterday on Highland Avenue. The fire happened around 11 a.m. Firefighters say everyone made it out okay, but the house is significantly damaged on the inside. Officials are still investigating the cause of the fire. And right now, fire crews across the country are making sure your family is prepared for what to do if your home were to go up in flames. The Louisville Fire Department hosted a ceremony yesterday to kick off Fire Prevention Week. They say everyone needs to be educating their kids on staying away from matches and having a working smoke detector. Crews say to be cautious around any size fire because they can get out of control quickly. Typically, there's time that the fire, if a fire has occurred, uh, it's doubling in size every 30 seconds. So what you perceive may be a small fire um, in your house can grow rapidly. 
Fire crews also take time this week to acknowledge fallen officers, not only in their department, but also through state and national memorials honoring those who died in the line of duty. And yesterday, Congressman Hal Rogers and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell announced more federal funds for Eastern Kentucky's first children's hospital. Pikeville Medical Center has received a $1.5 million power grant from the Appalachian Regional Commission. The children's hospital will be built within the current main building. This money will go towards equipment cost, and the new facility will provide health care for more than 100,000 children. And organizers are preparing for the first University of Pikeville 5K. The Bear the 99 race is November 2nd. However, to get, people more, get more people registered, volunteers are preparing a promotion day for the event. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock, they ask anyone attending the race to meet at the bottom of the historic 99 steps. Kay Hammond says the money raised from the 5K will go into a scholarship fund. Who knows what lives can be changed? With, with just um, being able to afford to go to school and to have a scholarship. Hammond says she would like to see 99 people line the 99 steps. Registration for U Pike students is $10 and for others it is $25. You're asked to wear orange and black clothing. Well, last Friday, a Cincinnati TV station reported on a woman finding love letters from 1922. The letters and stationery actually had an Eastern Kentucky address, but did not say if the couple ended up together. We posted the story on our website, catching the eye of a local historian, Danny Blevins, who decided he wanted to help crack the case. Blevins discovered that the two lovebirds actually ended up getting married and having three children. I'm excited for the people involved, for the lady that has the letters, because it's been something she's wanted to solve, and I'm excited for the family who I hope get the letters, and, and I have a personal gratification that I was the one that maybe got them together and solved this thing. Blevins said he learned that Arthur died about five years after the le letters were written, but Edith never remarried and moved to Oregon with her children. Well, thank you for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. And with cooler temperatures, it finally feels like fall is in the air here in the mountains. But looking to our west, it was a little different on Tuesday. After a few days of cooler weather, we warm back up this afternoon to what will be a pretty nice day. I'll have those details and your weekend forecast coming up next.